NT Media Productions presents I'm Making It Happen. I'm Making It Happen is brought to you in part by Cost You Less, your best value on St. Croix. Like us on Facebook. Text Cost You Less, one word, to the number 55678 for discounts and promotions. And the Women's Coalition of St. Croix. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Call the Women's Coalition of St. Croix at 340 773 9272 for more information. And Ms. Devin Carrington, I am number five on the ballot. It is often said that a society is judged by how it treats its weakest and most vulnerable members. Having personally experienced how difficult it is to have an elderly family member suffering mental impairment, I know that the Virgin Islands has limited resources to care for those suffering from mental issues, whether they be young or old. We are experiencing a mental health crisis which manifests itself in many ways, mostly as a result of our neglect. If elected, I will advocate for the establishment of expanded government and private facilities for those of us in need of such resources. With the aging of our baby boomer population and the growing presence of a population of mentally challenged individuals in our islands, there is a definite need for such resources. Making this issue a priority is an imperative, lest we be judged and punished for our lack of compassion as a people. If we're going to change, we have to change together. My name is Devin Carrington. I am number five on the ballot. I ask you for your vote, and I approve this message. And J&H Clothing, located in Watapana Mall, Peters Rest, St. Croix. Hi, you're watching I'm Making It Happen with Nicole Tyson, and we are here on the lovely beach in Fredericksted at Cottages by the Sea. And we're here to talk to Ingra Bell, who's a first-time publisher, author of Violet, the letter V, Virgin Island Pride. And we're gonna find out how she was able to make it happen and be a first time publisher and get some tips on how you can make it happen too. So come along with me. So thank you so much for being with us, Ingrid. Thank you so much, Nicole, for the invitation. I'm so happy to be here today and I'm excited to explain about Violet Loves the Letter V, Virgin Islands Pride, my new children's book. Awesome, as you can see right here, this is her new, um, this is her book, Violet. And guess what, while we've been sitting here, not sitting, setting up, she is the epitome of making it happen. She sold the book to some tourists that were sitting right there. I was like, wow, she made a sale, so that's awesome. You were just on the road with making it, with, you know, promoting your book. Thank you so much. It has been a great experience. I'll just like to tell everyone a little bit about the book. It's actually uh, for my mother uh, in her honor, uh, Violet Bow, who was an educator, culture bearer, church organist, and uh, she used to make it happen during her day. And uh, I wanted to continue her legacy, so I kind of came up with the idea of Virgin Islands, the letter V, Virgin Islands Pride, and so that's the start of of the book. So yeah, tell us how that um how that came about. How it came about with you even thinking about starting, you know, writing a book and becoming a first time author. When did that idea begin? Well, actually, uh, it began early on. I've always been interested in writing. I used to write song lyrics. I uh, studied music, I played in the bands here at St. Croix Central. I was always into the arts. My mother was a church organist. And so I used to write song lyrics way back in the day. I wanted to be a singer. And I did study music and sang for quite a while around the community and uh, on the mainland. So actually uh, being in the areas of library, archives, museums, working at the li Library of Congress for 20 years and studying music at Howard University, um, all came into a collective concept that I wanted to do something to encourage literacy, to encourage reading, and most in importantly to inspire the young people to continue to read, to continue to write. They too are authors. Every, each your author is you, you just don't know it. And I could inspire you to how, how you can start to put your thoughts down on paper and how do you go from an idea into the final product. So you can get your copy book out, a piece of paper, anywhere you are, and just start with an idea. That's where it starts. You make that idea and concept into a reality. And so like you, making it happen. Well, that's why you're on it. You're making it happen. And that's what I like to find out is like, um, you know, as we get into the conversation of how do you, how do you go through those steps? Do you have the idea? A lot of people might have an idea to write a book. So how did you go through those steps to like not just bring it from an idea but into fruition? 
Well, generally, uh, especially the other specialty I have is a copyright specialist. That's what I did for 20 years. And you want to protect your work. So you want to make sure it's registered at the United States Copyright Office. But it's actually protected from the time you put it in some tangible form. Whether you're recording it onto a CD or you're just uh, painting, you're into artwork, you have to concretize it, you have to put it down. So it has to come out of your head onto something. Whether, not just a computer, but then download it, print it out. Uh, so for song lyrics or for a book, your copy book is fine. You just start there and start writing your notes, put your ideas down on paper. You can start then with the registration of it. And from there you want to develop. You want to develop it. You may not know everything, but you have to start researching. Talk to other people who have done it. And kind of always keep in mind what it is that you want to do. What is your final outcome? What is it? What is the goal that you have in mind? I'm sure that's how you made it happen. You had a goal in mind in terms of what you wanted to do. You had a vision and a concept for it. And then you had to move forward in making that become a reality. So little step by step by step. So coming back now to your book, Violet loves the letter V, Virgin Islands Pride. Um, how did uh, you, you know get the language that you put in the book, okay. and then um, then the illustration? Well, the illustrations are done by Stuart P. Rames, a local uh, illustrator here on St. Croix. And the fun thing about it is uh, you have to develop, like I said, going back to that concept. So from the concept, you go to an outline. From the outline, you go to developing some sense of order. For this particular book, it was choosing words with the letter V. So for instance, uh, we have voyages, vessels, visitors, because we have tourists that come to the island. Um, I started listing all of the nouns, people, places, and things. And I started saying, okay, wait a minute, we've got, we got Mount Victory, we got Joseph Van Dyke and the British Virgin Islands, so all these V words. And I didn't know whether some of them would be significant and some of them would not be included, but the idea is to get as many as I could come up with. And it wasn't all in one sitting. So sometimes I would be driving or um, just out, and then I said, oh, wait a minute, Vienna cake. You know, so I write it down. After I accumulated a good number, then I started to say, oh my goodness, how am I gonna put this into, how am I even gonna start a book? What would that, where would I even start? And, and where do you start where you, when you don't know where to start is at the beginning. And where is the beginning? The beginning is, people often ask us, as, as you all know, oh, where are you from? I'm from the United States Virgin Islands. Well, where is that? Is that near Jamaica? Is that near, so they have no sense or idea where we're geographically located. So I figured a good start would be one, to identify, identify who we are as Virgin Islanders, where we're located, that's a good start, and then build from there. And then also put in a little bit about our ancestors and moving forward, coming forward. So that's basically how it started. The, what made you even choose the, the letter V to focus on regarding um, the book? Definitely because Virgin Islands, V for Virgin Islands. I wanted to focus on the Virgin Islands, not another letter in the alphabet. Also, it tied into my mother's initial V for Violet. And uh, Violet is a color, it's a flower. It's also associated with royalty and majesty. And that's who we are. That's where we come, come from as a people. So that's where we came from, and I wanted to start there. And basically, the gist of the book is the little girl's gonna get a gain a sense of pride of who she is, where she's from, and be a proud Virgin Islander. So that's the mission, the goal is for um, youths to learn about the Virgin Islands, correct? Yes. With the letter V, the letter and v. all the Vs that, um, what all the like words associated with V in our culture? Yes. Most definitely. And to learn a little bit about history and culture without being told, oh, this is a history book. I, I have been dubbed that it's a new history book. Well, yes, true. But I wanted to make it a, a book that a child would engage in, would learn from, kind of laugh with, and also be able to identify with, because there are many things in there. I was born and raised in Frederick said. So, you know, you wanna, you wanna uh, include places that they 
can associate with. It's not only about Frederick said, it's about the entire Virgin Islands. So we are, uh, and of course our shared neighbors and our good sisters and brothers in Puerto Rico, we got Vieques and Culebra, we have uh, all about Jos Van Dijk, Tortola, the British VI, all of that is included in terms of map location and a, a great story surrounding it. So, um, were there any challenges that you experienced? Like, how long did it take you from start to finish to get this book completed? Oh, well, well, let's see. I'll have to say the hurricane interrupted things. I started uh, in 2017, and then, as we know, we went into Hurricane Maria and Irma. Uh, so, during the many months that we had without electricity, that was a very good time to actually start to really focus on that since we had no other uh, real uh, entertainment and I really honed in on various elements with the book. Uh, then I had to meet with the steward, of course, the illustrator, basically come up with how many panels of illustrations that I would need and the challenges that we had are with a children's book, it's generally between 32 to 36 pages So with illustrations. So that means technically only 16 pages are, is available for a text. And then you have to have the corresponding uh, illustration. So uh, I would have to go to him and I say, well, I need these six elements in an illustration, but you have the artistic freedom to come up however that's going to come up but I need these elements in there to go along with the story. So that's, it really uh, pushed us to kind of work together because I don't want to, I want to tell him how that's going to be, but I need these elements. And then the, the challenge for him was, okay, I have to come up with these elements. So we had fun. So from start to finish, how, how long did it take for the, when you first came up with the idea to when you finally finished um, publishing the book, how long did that take? Well, I, I'm going to say uh, off and on about a year and a half. Because, you know, there's a lot of people that take years to, to finish their book. So, like, how are we able to stay focused and get it done in a, sh to me, that's a short period of time. It is a short period of time, but you have to, and it, it's not that I had time to just focus on that, but it always was in the back of my head to do something with it every day. Going back to what you said about making it happen and how can, how can you make things happen or if you have it in your mind. I'm going to say persistence. Be persistent. Be passionate about it. You, ha you have to want it. It's not, it's not going to come. It's just not going to come and drop in your lap. You have to pursue. You have to constantly learn. You have to be willing to be open-minded to accept Com comments or criticisms or suggestions, recommendations, however you want to phrase it. Just you have to have your mind open. Some people don't want to be told anything. Well, you, you're not going to grow that way. You have to be able to, to receive it, have a dialogue and exchange. Communication is important, very important, uh, critically important. And you have to be able, you have to listen, you know, and, and take, say, okay, well, that maybe I. I could see that. You know, I think I'll, I'll, let me revisit that for a minute. You don't have to agree. There, you, no one said you have to agree. You have to listen, though, and, and, and receive it. I'm sure with you doing such a tremendous job as a young person, I'm so proud to see what you have done and where you're going and your vision and talking to you. And I know you have challenges, but it never looks like you have any challenges because you're like, she's just easygoing, smooth, every day has a schedule, like a crazy schedule, but I don't know how. I just, I said, okay, hey, that is wonderful. So congratulations to you as well, because you're making it, definitely making it happen. Thank you. Yeah, no, there's always challenges. <laughs> always. Oh, yeah. You just gotta keep it moving. Yeah, you most, you, you do, whether it's technical challenges, uh, other challenges, you know, I, I could say I had, um, oh, I'll give you, I, I just thought of a challenge. I was going to do a presentation on on the book. I was invited to do a presentation, and so I said, "Okay." And I knew in my mind I'm going to have the book on hand. Well, shipping is an issue. She <laughs> <laughs> was going to use a different term. <laughs> shipping. shipping was an issue. An issue. Uh, especially when you're considered to be, well, we're not international, and I'm, I'm so tired of trying to explain the Virgin Islands. We're not 
We're not international. I'm sorry, you know. No, we're not. It's not, not even international. It says U.S., United States, Virgin <laughs> Islands, and they still consider international. So that, so long story short, I'm expecting to have a book to present. I had no book to present because I didn't get the books on time, but I still had a very big presentation. So what do you do? Wait, wait, was that the book um, when you did the opening, um, the book signing at? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I. I had I, my I, to overcome that challenge because they already warned me that many people had book signings that they were here on St. Croix and the books weren't here. I brought the books with me. <laughs> so you made sure that the first issue didn't happen the second time. <laughs> I made sure that issue wasn't going to happen to me. Okay. I, I physically brought those books down okay. with me. <laughs> right. So I'm not going to have that issue. But um, so this was just, just at publication, just uh, before publication. And uh, I said, uh, oh my, M to the G, what am I gonna do? Okay, think out the box, think out the box. Well, technology, I gave a PowerPoint presentation using the original file, the copy file from the publisher. And I was able to just put it up on the screen and say, this, this is the book. You know, so that was overcoming the challenge. I didn't have the physical book in my hand, but technically I had the book. And that's very important to know is that you um, were, were resourceful. You didn't give up because no. you could have felt defeated and upset and, you know, frustrated. But you, you thought about, well, how can I still make this happen? How can I still make it happen? Definitely. And I had to, there was no, you could, you could give up. And that's what I meant by being persistent and, and persevering and, and just pushing through things. You have to find a way, find a way. Don't say, oh, you know, okay, well I, you know, call the people and tell them cancel. No, there, that is not the option. That's that not is a, not an option. That's not an option. It's not an option. I'm, make it, I'm gonna make it happen. One way or the other, I'm gonna make it happen. So that was, I said, okay, well, hey, all this technology, I have to, I going to show a PowerPoint presentation. And it went over very well. I'll have to say, um, in October, I presented uh, in Houston, Texas, to the National Black Book Festival, which was in Houston, Texas. I was also in Charlotte, North Carolina, to a children's festival. So I'm making it happen, and I had to just push through to make it, make it, make it happen for sure. And you know, so I love that 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 story because I knew you had some challenges. <laughs> But you overcome your challenges, so sometimes you don't even remember because, you know, you still made it happen. You still have the presentation. You still are doing, um, going through the motions and getting things done. But, um, and so you, it doesn't seem like it was a struggle yeah. in the end because you still had success, but you had to think outside the box for it to happen. Yeah, so Exactly. I had to think about it because I was, I'm sure it wasn't as easy as I make it seem, but then I, I, I don't allow things to pull me down. I, I just say, okay, if I can't go straight through to it, I'm going to go around to the left, around to the right. Okay, I'm going to go under, I'm going to go over. I'm going to get there somehow. So that's what you have to really say, okay, plan A, plan B, plan C, plan Z. Maybe you'll get to plan Z, but you got to make it happen. So um, let's see, any tips? I mean, we went through a lot of different things. Is there anything else you want to mention about your book? Um, how can people find you? Where can they purchase the book? Any other um, events coming up soon that you know people should look out for? Well, yes, thank you for that. So my book signing was on November 14th at Undercover Books in Gallus Bay, and it was very successful. Um, I'm identifying a few venues here in Frederickstead. Currently, the book is available at Undercover Books at Abbey in uh, Company Street. Uh, in Christianstead, it's at the Owl and the Seahorse in St. Thomas, and I'm um, looking for some other venues in St. John. So the, the, the exciting thing is I taught two junior high school, uh, middle school students, seventh grade at John H. Woodson, and uh, that was for national, during National Education Week, and, and it was really exciting because I didn't do a book reading, I was inspiring them to become authors, and so the exercises and, and opportunity for dialogue and communication with them was fantastic because I really was so happy to see that they were so excited after that they could actually do it. And so that, that technique that I have is going to probably uh, develop into a workshop 
uh, which is currently being worked on for at a site here uh, in St. Croix, um, probably by summer. And uh, I was really, I kind of tested out my theory because I wanted to, it's not so much about my book, it's about how could I inspire the young people to follow suit, to write, put things down, appreciate who they are. That goes back to VIP, which is also a V word, <laughs> Virgin Islands pride. And how can you put your creativity down? How can we appreciate all of our arts, musicians, artists, illustrators, painters, craftspersons. Um, I uh, was at Starving Artists. I was at Olympic Park yesterday for the Antiques Collectible Fair. Uh, there are many things that are coming up. So everyone, if you're into art, no matter what form, pursue your passion. Pursue it. And make it happen. And make it happen. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to say about the book or anything else? Anything? No, I think we've covered it all. Thank you so much for a wonderful opportunity. And like, like I said, compliments of the season to everyone. Have a blessed holiday season and a fantastic new year. And thank you, publisher, new author, Ingrid Bao of the Violet Loves Letter V Virgin here. Island's Virgin Islands Pride. Again, she said that you can purchase it at Undercover Books on St. Croix, The Owl. The Owl and Seahorse on St. Thomas. And, um, you know, check her out on her website. Um, Norillion.com. That's N-O-I-R-I-L-L-I-O-N. N-O-I-R-I-L-L-I-O-N.com. And you will get my email from there. Once you visit the website, you'll see what's up and new and what's coming. You can hit up Stuart P. Rames on his Facebook page. He's on there. And shoot us an email if you would like for us to come and read or just be wherever you want us to be. We're available. Thank you. And I want to find out before we go, sorry, is that um, well, how did you choose Stuart Rames as the, the illustrator? And um, how did you make that connection? Yeah, finding an illustrator for a book is, is a key and an important. There are many wonderful artists on St. Croix. We have such, I know most of them. So the, the thing is I wanted to find an illustrator that one would be flexible enough to put their mind way back in the mind of a child because writing a book for that age group and that age level you have to be open enough create creative enough and try to put things that are going to be fun so I think he and I reverted to the age of 12 as we were writing the book because we just you just had to open your mind just really freely and what I liked about the type of uh, art that he used was pencil art and that was kind of similar to penciled crayons and that would be something that a child would relate to. I didn't want to use like graphic arts or uh, something that looked very commercial. Not that our local art authors, um, I mean illustrators, have commercial uh, commercial quality but you want to make something really authentic to what we have here. You want someone that's going to be able to, if I say I want a picture of say the Fredericksburg dock area. I need somebody that knows what that looks like. Okay, because I talked to a few illustrators and uh, artists and based on all of what I received back, I decided to ask about their ideas for certain panels that I had. And based on that response, I chose Stuart because I felt he's going to be flexible to work with me with the vision I had uh, as my book. I made that connection. Actually, I found him at an event uh, at the uh, fort, and I just kind of walked up to him and I said, "Hi, you know, I, you know, could I talk to you for a minute about uh, a possible project?" And from there, we had dialogue and conversation. And you also mentioned that because he was local and you could have used somebody in the States, but because he's local and he knew the places that you were going to be referencing in the book, that he was the best person. Exactly. Yeah, one of them. One of them. Because my idea is to have other books and decide which illustrator, which artist might be a good fit for that particular book. Okay. So this is Ingrid Bau I'm making, on I'm Making It Happen. She's a first, um, well, first time publisher of... Violet loves the letter V, Virgin Islands Pride. And um, find it at the undercover bookstore, St. Croix, 
Owl and the Owl. The owl, and the, owl and the seahorse on St. Thomas. And there will be soon two venues in Frederick City by January. Okay. And so, you know, um, we appreciate you taking your time to share your experience and um, give some tips to our uh, audience and on how they can make it happen if you're interested in publishing a book. This yeah. is the best person. Yeah. yeah. yeah definitely. I'm going to have a big book signing slated for Frederick said it will be all announced and in the newspapers. So get ready for that and you'll be back covering it for us. So thanks for watching. I'm making it happen with yours truly, Nicole Tyson. We are here at the lovely cottages by the sea on St. Croix, Fredericksted, U.S. Virgin Islands. And um, we appreciate you, definitely. If you haven't shared the, this video yet, please share. Also, like the page if you haven't already done so. Check us out on YouTube at I'm Making It Happen on Instagram at I'm Making It Happen with the letter R-U. And then also our website, I'm Making It Happen.com. You have a lot of information there. And so stay tuned for the next big interview. And of course, as always, it's about you and it's about me. It's all about we. So make it happen. Make it happen. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not my foot's sweet. All right. <laughs> I'm Making It Happen is brought to you in part by... My name is Devin Carrington. I am number five on the ballot. It is often said that a society is judged by how it treats its weakest and most vulnerable members. Having personally experienced how difficult it is to have an elderly family member suffering mental impairment, I know that the Virgin Islands has limited resources to care for those suffering from mental issues, whether they be young or old. We are experiencing a mental health crisis which manifests itself in many ways, mostly as a result of our neglect. If elected, I will advocate for the establishment of expanded government and private facilities for those of us in need of such resources. With the aging of our baby boomer population and the growing presence of a population of mentally challenged individuals in our islands, there is a definite need for such resources. Making this issue a priority is an imperative, lest we be judged and punished for our lack of compassion as a people. If we're going to change, we have to change together. My name is Devin Carrington. I am number five on the ballot. I ask you for your vote and I approve this message. This was an NT Media production. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. It's a sociable thing to do.